I'm back in the office, baby. So since season 9 started September 9th, 2018, season 10 started on September 29th, 2019. A whole year in between seasons. Back to 10 episode seasons. Good choice. Actually, counting the Christmas specials, it's technically 11. Tis the season for an hour long Christmas special. Oh no. Well, I can say at least half of them were funny, while also hosting two hilarious skits this holiday season. I don't have a lot to say about these specials, but these are the ones that stood out to me. Since now I'm in a festive mood, out of literally all of the holiday specials, I honestly believe that the Halloween episode is the worst one. None of them were funny to me whatsoever, except for one running from the villain in a horror movie by making fun of a common horror trope by juxtaposing one specific character. They also use the Wilhelm scream. Man, the Wilhelm scream is pretty overused, huh? I mean, I should know. I watch Harrison Splimby along with 7 million other people. But you know what's also overused? Musicals. Studio C has done some musical sketches in the past, and most of them were pretty enjoyable. Notice how I said were. Season 10 alone has 14 musical sketches. So if you're someone who likes musicals, this season is for you. So not me. 10 of them I didn't find enjoyable whatsoever, but four of them were actually pretty good. One, homeschool musical. It's funny because of how not true it is. I should know. I was homeschooled my entire life. Did someone say defamation? Why does it have to be a musical? I know it's a stereotype that homeschoolers like musicals, but that's not true. I never liked musicals, even though all of my friends liked it, and if I had to pick, then my favorite musical was Fiddler on the Roof. 2. Harrison the Musical This was a parody of what would happen if Lin-Manuel Miranda made a sequel to Hamilton. Although I'm not even into Hamilton, and I never was, though my friends played it nonstop at work for the longest of time, which led me to disliking it because I was forced to listen to it for hours on end. Anyways, it was surprising surprisingly really funny. 3. Elevator Romance Normally, a cheesy love song isn't really in my wheelhouse, however, the way in which the story proceeded caught me off guard, and the writing of the storytelling was actually good. 4. A Finnish Family Singalong With accents flying every which way, the comedic angle with this sketch comes from the fourth wall breaks of the audience participation. It wasn't my favorite, but it did make me laugh, so there you go. Look, I know part 2 is starting off a bit harsh, and trust me, it's gonna get worse. But before I lose all my Reddit karma and get downvoted, I will mention that there are good things about this cast. By introducing season 10 with a montage of all of the new cast members with different sections of the sketch, they now have a Studio C bus. So that's kind of cool even if I'm not a big fan of the new intro music. Okay, well, how about this? There was a parody of Sailor Moon Volleyball for all the weeaboos in real life. I should know, I dated one. No, but for real though, Studio C has never done an anime parody before, so it was funny. Not because of the anime, but because of the coach. Rena, just hit the ball like a normal person. Are you sure you can't walk it off? My leg is broken. Okay. Not to mention the fact that they referenced Among Us. One of our men spotted Bigfoot last night. They were able to track him to this very room. He's Among Us. <laughs> See, that's funny, right? Okay, how about this? There was animation in one of the sketches. I mean, that's pretty cool, right? It's impressive for sure. Okay, wait. How about a sketch of Superman's deadlines? Where it showed how good Jason was as Batman and that none of these cast members are very skilled in character voice acting in particular. Listen, I know it sounds harsh, but let me just show you the juxtaposition. You know, it's crazy, but my horoscope totally predicted this would happen today. <gasps> I was able to stop the bomb from hitting the orphanage, but instead it hit the... You see writing? You shut up. You shut up right now. Why do you even need a job? <laughs> what are you guys doing? Get out. Mm, this again. Look. <laughs> wow, this clip aged so well. You know, at least the costumes were well designed, at the very least. Wait, that skit wasn't even funny. Okay, picture this. How about a Gary V in a nutshell joke? Those are classic, right? What's your annual income? I'm 10. That's an excuse. And excuses come from not trusting 
your potential. My point is, since it's a new cast, they're trying new things. Some of them worked and some of them did not whatsoever. And you know what? To each their own. However, there's been multiple times that I've noticed that in season 10, there are a lot of similar sketches that have reminded me of earlier seasons. Rapunzel's Prince Arrives was similar to all of the countless Prince Charming sketch. Yeah, just one. No, there's multiple freaking sketch. Okay. Grease the musical. I don't know the name of it, so that's just what I called it. Remind me of the Fun Friends skit. No, not because they're both musicals. It's just that the joke structure was very similar and replaced a few key details, so that way it wasn't obvious that they copied someone else's homework. They did a Dora skit as well, which was straight up already done by the previous cast, and Be Yourself was just the adopted Superman sketch, but with aliens. Wait, that's just the same sketch. Video Love was another series that didn't work out. It's just bad since it's very similar to the other super short Studio C sketches, say that five times fast, that also weren't funny. That's all I have to say about it, but I have to add an additional sentence so that way this is technically a paragraph. I told you it was gonna get worse. And to make it even better, I mean worse, here's the top two worst sketches of season 10. First, the Today Show is the second to worst sketch, which made me realize how bad the season was, along with an entire comment section on Facebook, and this guy in this sketch is me watching season 10. You failed, and there's not supposed to be a way to fail, okay? So this next one made me speechless. It is the worst sketch of the entire season. I'm not even gonna say anymore. Here's the clip. One little dung beetle having fun. Happy is he as he rolls his dung. Dung from the elephants, dung from the hares. Dung from the monkeys, dung from the bears. <sighs> I'm speechless at just how disrespectful this feels. And I can't even explain why, because now my brain is broken. And we still have five more seasons to go. This was one of the opening sketches of season 10. <laughs> I'm gonna lose my mind by the end of this, won't I? I didn't write this down, but this feels like secondhand embarrassment if you've ever felt that. That's the only way I can describe this, quite honestly. And actually, I almost did lose my mind because there's a very interesting part to all of this that I have failed to mention until this very moment. We have another mystery on our hands because episode four is missing. <laughs> My first lead was an archive on fandom.com, since I literally couldn't figure out which sketches were from season 4. I wanted to figure out why this episode was nuked from existence. Just Watch said that Studio C had 10 seasons on Roku, so naturally, I needed to know what they were hiding. Come on. Come on, please. Come on. Come on. This is not season 10. What the frick? That's not season 10. Oh my gosh. Those aren't the right dates. This is not season 10. Are you joking? Oh my gosh. There is evidence everywhere that this episode exists. And most of the skits themselves are traceable at the very least, but not these two sketches. At least with Mr. Science, we know that it's a series that Studio C did because it appears in other episodes. So that one I'm not too worried about. But every place I scour, all I find is dead links and empty promises. Now, originally I thought they just mislabeled the episodes, but they didn't, they just removed them. 
but why? At least we have the order of the sketches with most of them still being public, with most of the public ones still being humorous to my own being. Even with most of these skits available, I felt two stings of mystery coursing through my veins. The first was WW2 Message Fail, which was public for a time, but it's now privated for unknown reasons. The second was Mr. Science Lightning, which had barely less of a shot for finding in the first place, since it was never public on YouTube, besides the other parts in the series. However, the first thing was lodged in my brain for days on end. There was one solution I had up my sleeve. The Wayback Machine. Using the dead link, I could see if there was a screenshot from when it was public, then watch it from there. This means that it was at least public four years ago on YouTube. So now we have confirmation that it existed at one point in time publicly. Yet, for some reason, it doesn't now. Have you ever been so close to an answer, yet you feel even further from it? I've tried various web browsers, plugins, programs, YouTube tutorials for hours to no avail well now i know how buzzfeed unsolved feels right about now so if any of you can crack this case comment below and let me know i can't stop thinking about this please help well now since i'm frustrated that i haven't been able to solve a mystery let's mention the best of season 10 to help cheer me up if that doesn't work i'm gonna open one of these this is an alcohol this is jones soda i'm leaving the alcohol for when i really need it i know i've been speaking quite negatively about season 10 so far but what do you expect? I don't like change. With that said, while there wasn't a lot, there were some hilarious sketches amongst the garbage. These four are the best of season 10 by far, which I highly recommend. The union meeting of plumbers, mob guy takes care of a snitch, which was the hardest I've laughed this season since Dalton as the mob boss was perfect casting. Man in the moon? Looks like the Annoying Orange finally got casted in a movie, and the annual gingerbread contest. Another good thing about season 10 is that it started adding behind the scenes in between sketches way more often, with many different interviews of who wrote some of the sketches, which ended up being some of the cast members. They also talked about the behind the scenes of the new song, which like, I understand why they like it, but it doesn't beat the original. This is also where, as per usual, they added bumpers back, except they really upgraded them. Not all of them are great, but the ones that are, are quite impressive. Now, as we continue to look at the show, you're probably going to start to notice that there are hints about missing the old cast. This, of course, doesn't manifest till about season 16, but the fact that there's a skit about a Studio C fan experience giveaway, which leads the fan to be disappointed because the old cast left, is really telling. Also, yes, it's obvious that I love the old cast, but I, however, am open-minded to the new cast, and I'm trying to be as objective as I possibly can with watching the newer seasons for the first time. All right, so what I learned about the season is that the mystery of the missing episode was more entertaining than the episodes that are available. All right, so I forgot to make one very important note, so we're gonna do that right now on camera, tallying up the funny sketches from this season. Here's the number of all of the funny sketches from season 10. Wait, wait a minute. What is this doing here? If I were season 10, I would be a disappointment. Wow, so just like I am now. <laughs> so now we know at least that the JK Studio sketches would have been much better as a season 10 for Studio C. This isn't even me intentionally bashing these specific cast members. I went in with an open mind, but I was not very impressed and I barely laughed. I just hope this trend doesn't continue. <laughs> We, we found the sketch. 
I can't believe it, honestly. The fact that it's on the site called Yuku, I've never heard of this site before in my entire life. Oh my gosh, we found one of the missing sketches. And while I can't play it in its entirety, I honestly don't understand why it was removed from Studio C. I would understand it maybe from like a graphic point of view because it's about people dying in the war. But this sketch honestly reminds me a lot of when Tom Scott did his sketch with the soldiers, but instead of other soldiers fighting them, it's robots. It's kind of similar to this, except this whole sketch is like the telephone effect of like you're telling the person one thing and then all of a sudden they say it to another person, but in like a totally different way. That's basically the point of the sketch. And then there's a huge climax at the end that is kind of like the main joke. So all of this is like set up and then the initial joke is like the punchline quite obviously but honestly this sketch is actually pretty funny i think it's one of the funnier ones and one of the more clever ones that studio c has done in season 10 so if you want to watch it in, in its entirety i'll have a link in the description for that so you can watch it after this video is over i also recorded the sketch in case that link goes down for some reason but yeah we actually found this sketch and i was super excited when I first found it. There was some guy on Reddit that just posted the link and it's here and oh my gosh. The fact that this was posted three years ago too is so insane to me. I I love it. Oh, hey, sorry. I was on a new app called Threads, which has been way more interesting than most of season 10. Speaking of which, while watching season 10, I noticed something very interesting. The previous cast always had their own original characters that they would play more than once each member had characters that fit their personalities really well, and they even played sketches as themselves so that way we got to learn the names of the cast members. With season 10, however, I noticed a lack of that, maybe because it was technically their first season as a group. I'm wondering if we'll see any recurring characters from season 10, but personally, I wasn't the biggest fan of season 10, so I wouldn't mind if they tried something different, preferably without musicals this time around. Spoiler alert, there's plenty of musicals. I have a joke for you. What do you get when you cross blindism, Jojo Siwa, decapitation, and Scooby-Doo? Season 11. Why don't we start with the positives, shall we? I'm starting to realize that Arvin is my favorite cast member out of everyone. Seems like every time I laugh, it's because of a joke that he makes. Look, please, I can't. Would you just please go away? Oh, you don't like me because I'm blind? No! This woman subscribes no. to blindism! That's not a thing! There was also a one-shot music video that they did this season, which was impressive visually and had some good comedic bits. If you're expecting more positives from the season, don't. But what's new? Well, apparently there are these weird skit bumpers that appear throughout the show, none of which are humorous. And I did count them as skits because they fall in that same weird category as Tweeting Rainbow. Okay, what about the new characters in season 11? We got Jojo Siwa, which is a pretty dead meme in 2023. Shakespeare, but modernized to make fun of Gen Z slang and Shakespeare at the same time. And Scooby-Doo, which I'm surprised it took 11 seasons for them to make a Scooby-Doo skit. Besides the VFX and the characters, decapitation is very prevalent this season. This isn't the only sketch, however, and although it doesn't show it, it's heavily implied. You can't just make a studio audience member disappear like that! <laughs> Talk about a headache. <laughs> Another factor this season was fourth wall breaks. Although this tactic has been done before, there was just an overabundance of it specifically in season 11. Last of all, regarding the new inclusions, never have I ever seen the background move before. You know, maybe some of the returning elements might save season 11. I mean, considering Mr. Science constantly blows up in every sketch, surely it'll get better than that, right? 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 So the answer is no, for three reasons. You got the escape room sketch, making fun of millennials, but the escape room concept has been done before by the old cast, which by the way, just because you make fun of a stereotype doesn't automatically make it funny. Next was a puppet sketch. Again, the original cast did it first and better. Then the sketch they did with no money was very similar to a premise where Thatcher swirls the brandy. What? You think that with a new cast, there would be more fresh ideas. And while there are plenty of new ideas, some of them just 
aren't that great. My second to last point is that it's been two seasons so far, and I still don't know the new cast's names. The shipping sketch was their honest first attempt at everyone playing themselves, which made me realize that there's been a severe lack of that with these newer seasons, where we know of these cast members as characters rather than normal people in crazy situations. To prove my point further, one of the last sketches of season 11 was a song about the crew and how the cast members just don't know each of their names. This sketch is so ironic, considering I know none of the new cast's names. So in order to remedy that, since the show hasn't done a very good job at implementing that whatsoever, let's play a game where I have to try to guess the correct cast members' names. All right, so we're gonna start now. All right, so first is Arvin right here. That's Tori up here. Shoot, okay. <laughs> this is worse than I thought it was. Dalton, that's what it is, okay. I have to guess for like most of these, quite honestly. Okay, um, one of them's name is Austin, I think. I think. I think one of them's Caleb. I doubt that's right, but you know, whatever. I don't think her name is Jess, but we're gonna go with that. I don't think her name's Ashley. I've seen the intro so many times too, and I don't know the <laughs> names. I think his name is Gavin. Samantha. It's not Drew, but I'm writing it down. In four minutes, all right? And most of these are wrong. I just know that most of these are wrong right now. All right, good to go for round two. All right, we're starting now. Mallory, Jason, Stacy, Whitney, Matt, James, Adam, Steven, Jeremy. Okay, I'm missing one. Um, shoot, I'm missing one more. Okay, um, um. Oh, shoot, what's her name? I'm gonna go with Maddie. I think it's Maddie. Okay, time. One minute and 44 seconds. I think I got one of them wrong. So yeah, that was my attempts at a world record speed run. The fact that literally I have to come up with fun ways to get through these newer seasons says a lot. And if you're still thinking, well, that doesn't prove anything since there were nine seasons of the older cast, which I've technically watched multiple times, we're gonna try this again after we watch the six newer seasons, and then we'll see. My whole point is the older cast had a lot of skits where they play essentially themselves, but just in wacky situations, whereas the newer cast is most character acting. All right, so to end off this season, let me show you a little example of their writing style. With comedy, you have a lot of tools at your disposal, like many of the joke types we already established. And while they use a lot of different techniques, here is a clip of the epitome of their jokes. Time to get to work. Let's go. Thanks, Fergus. Okay, just five more minutes. No! Come on, let's get to work. Now, what do you think is going to happen next? This is the most important meal of the day! Now, surely something else will happen, right? Let me love you, son! Okay, now the rule of three and the repeats have to be over by now, right? I want to go to the park! Keep in mind, this isn't the only sketch like this. <sighs> okay. I'm done with season 11, so let's see how it scored. Oh, oh no, it's getting worse. All right, so let's take a little bit of a breather because personally, I haven't been doing that great mentally, which totally doesn't relate to me forcing myself to watch the newer seasons. There have been a few collaborations with Studio C and JK Studios, which were posted around the time season 11 ended. The first was a finish the sketch segment hosted on the Studio C channel, starting with a two minute intro of banter between groups, as well as explaining the rules. Studio C went first, responding to the footage that JK Studios sent. Out of the five sketches present here, the delivery was the most humorous. Though it was fun to watch both casts interact with each other in all of the sketches, each with their own specific chemistry. Next was JK Studios, with the highlights being the musical telegram with Stacy and Arvin, and my favorite being the USPS man with Matt and Arvin, which was hilarious. What's really cool about these two collaborators is that it almost felt like a what-if scenario if the old cast never left and they just added more people. To see these two casts members make jokes with each other. It was honestly so refreshing to watch for once in my life. And compared to everything I've watched the past two seasons, it was actually funny. Now, 
let's just hope, please for my mental sanity, that season 12 will be better. There are two disappointing things that have happened recently. Elon renaming Twitter to X, probably the dumbest business move I've ever seen in my entire life, and season 12. However, before we get to season 12, in order to reverse all of the negativity that I've been talking about, let's mention something positive. Do you like wearing shirts? If yes, perfect. If not, well, too bad, you have to wear something. Introducing Wizard Design. Stickers, shirts, notebooks, tapestries. Wow, that looks so pretty. And bumper stickers. All to support an actual artist who isn't shilling out NFTs, thank God. I bought these cool stickers that I put on my water bottle, and I love it. My next plan is to buy this shirt, which is honestly adorable. I'm not sponsored, by the way. I'm just shouting out a friend's project. So go to redbubble.com slash people slash wizard dot design for some really cute art. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting much from season 12, but it actually started off really strong. The very first episode was honestly really good due to almost every single sketch being funny and the concepts felt fresh as if they hired new writers. Past this point, two hilarious sketches come to mind in terms of positivity. The weather forecast in episode eight made my face hurt from laughing so much and the milk sketch was a very close second for me. When it comes to the show, they like to rest on their laurels when they can, even though we've had a brand new cast for three seasons so far. Some previous sketches have just seemed extremely similar to some of the older sketches. This time around, we have Kyle the sequel, which was only funny due to the slapstick. Another music video, except this time it's directed by a cast member, so that was cool. And another Christmas special, which although it wasn't my favorite Christmas special, I appreciate that they tried something new with connecting all of the sketches. The set design was cool. There were 19 sketches in this one since it was an hour long Christmas special. Some fake commercials made this special stand out. And oh my gosh, did they seriously just use the Ecclestone joke from seasons ago. And now, another cast performance review with network executive Chuck Megan. Chuck Megan is a short series that they did on the show with various cast members, framing it as a why should I renew your contract kind of vibe. It's pretty hit or miss, but Chuck Megan is at its best when he genuinely surprises the cast members. Face up to it. What is it? What is this? Oh my. I literally called last week to get this taken up. Please don't play it. Please don't play it. No, no, don't play it. Please, please. Chuck, I'll do anything. Please no, no, don't no. I think it. we have to watch it. No, please I don't. think you and I together. Chuck, no. Go ahead, please. let's watch it. No, Dana. Dana. In episode two, there was a contest winner who got to be part of Studio C. Half of the skits were pretty good, so I'd say out of all the episodes of the season, this one might be worth viewing. Making a volcano. First, you take the vinegar. Wait a minute, you're white. You can't say that. When it comes to sketch comedy, parodies are known as one of the most well-known forms of satirical art. Studio C has always made parodies and they continue that tradition, this time with various IPs such as Chopped, a really funny sketch, and Antique Roadshow. Two more notable parodies were also noticed by me. First was the unabridged adages of Benjamin Franklin, seven bumper sketches of Benjamin Franklin that don't really add a lot of comedic value to the show overall. But then, out of nowhere, Studio C did an episode long Twilight Zone special. These themed episodes are few and far between, so whenever they make one of these, you can tell that a lot of thought and effort has been put into it compared to a one-off sketch. You know, this season so far has actually been really good. The concepts of the sketches are funny, and I found myself laughing hard. Is this good TV? Have I finally stumbled past the rough years into something that I'm actually excited to watch again? <laughs> Jewel, what's the score, Jewel? What's the score? Oh wow, uh, 
it's been a while. Suffice to say, the newer seasons made me rage quit hard enough to make another channel because I haven't talked about indie games in like a year. And honestly, I needed the break. Which, oh yeah, I started a brand new indie game review channel to revive gems of the internet. Because I want to keep this channel for the long form documentaries where I go insane every single year. <laughs> Just kidding. The indie game that I hyper fixated on for a week straight up made me go insane. So I deleted the project and the channel. So here's my shortest ever indie game review. It was good, but really frustrating. The more I watch the show, the more it just becomes noise. Most of the skits aren't memorable. And when I look through all of my notes, I've just been writing less of them because the longer this show goes on, the less interesting and humorous it becomes. As per usual, this show has some new features as well as some returning ones. And although they always try to do something new, did it actually work? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> that's not a simple answer. It never is. Kill me now. Since the new cast has been trying to reanimate a dead corpse for the past four seasons, there are definitely hints to referencing the old cast, which although they mean it as a nod of respect to the previous cast, it just, it comes up as unnecessary. For example, in one skit, one of the animals is named Cat Meese. Why? What purpose does this serve? Yeah, sure, it's a pun, but it doesn't add anything to the overall skit. You're just referencing a previous cast member because you couldn't think of a better name for this cat. Or better yet, they literally play the Awkward Avoidance Viking music in this skit. I'm sorry, what? First of all, the Awkward Avoidance Viking is nowhere to be found here, and the reason it was funny in the original sketch is because of the juxtaposition between everyday normal life and a huge Viking appearing out of nowhere to cause chaos. This this isn't even an awkward avoidance viking origin story in fact i doubt these characters are even vikings in the first place even if they are it doesn't pay correct respect and tribute to the character because this skit literally has nothing to do with the awkward avoidance viking in the first place so then why play his original theme song the only explanation that actually makes sense is if they played it to give the original fans something to latch on to which isn't necessary just make good sketches the icing on the cake however to all of this is the very first skit of season 13. There was a super meta sketch about the stigma of the newer cast where they literally take these joke types that they've already established and then they use them again. The skits have become so formulaic at this point that even they are addressing Suffice it. to say, at this point, Studio C has lost its voice completely. There's two sketches where the writing is extremely similar to an I think you should leave sketch, two sketches that feel more like a therapy session for the writers of those skits, three pranks that aren't skits, there was an entire song about one of the extras for some reason, and the worst skit series I have ever seen made it very obvious to me why this show has fallen off the rails. The feigning Goat Boy Show. I have never seen a more disappointing sketch series by Studio C, and here's why. I'm sorry, but the Feigning Goat Boy Show is too predictable. The setup makes it very obvious what the punchline is going to be because it's literally in the title. To better explain why this doesn't work, here are some comedy legends. Looking for the unexpected. When people talk about jokes, people go, oh, we thought they were gonna zig and then they were gonna zag. That's the anatomy of a joke. The setup thinks you're gonna go in one direction and we go in an opposite direction. So you can go, Oh, I'm gonna go in that direction. Uh, everybody will know. No, not everybody will know because you're you and they're them right from your prism. When you're expecting a certain punchline, most of the time, it's not going to land because the audience already knows what to expect. Comedy is all about the unexpected and the mangoes. The funniest part about all of this is that this sketch is immediately followed up by the quote, the only real mistake is the ones from which we learn nothing. Well, why don't you take your own advice then? Now, since I spent the past four paragraphs dissecting why the season doesn't work, here's why it does. One of the best sketches of the season was a parody skit that was also a single actor sketch, a Judge Judy parody. Everything about this was just hilarious to me. The redundancy of the visual effects, the loudness of multiple Judge Judys, the idiosyncrasies of how Judge Judy acts. I love it so much. Other positive factors may include good transitions between sketches that are visually appealing and the fact that Chuck Megan is back. Honestly, I just really like the Chuck Megan character. He's honestly grown up. It's been a nice familiar face that appears every so often, especially with the amount of bad sketches I've had to watch. And there's been a lot. 
Oh gosh. In fact, there was a reason for the Chuck Megan character in the first place that makes this whole two season skit series make sense. And it makes me enjoy this character even more. If you were to stick around to the end credits, you would have realized that the Chuck Megan skits were a setup the whole time to this specific reveal. This year I know mistakes were made, not by me though. So that's the only important thing. So I want to, excuse me, you've just been sitting there staring at me. You, are you here to clean the windows or something? Uh, I'm Jason. I'm returning to the cast of Studio C. What the heck is Studio C? Oh boy. <laughs> It's been a while since I've upgraded the graphs for these seasons. It took me an entire day to do this since, I'll be honest, I kind of fell behind. But now it's fully updated. And literally every single graph went down. If you look at seasons 9 and 10, it becomes very obvious that there was a decrease in number of sketches, hilarious sketches, overall funny sketches, and the percentages of the ratio of funny sketches to number of total sketches. Honestly, there's not much to say here, except that my arm is getting tired already. There is a clear peak the golden years of Studio C, which then later develops past the peak and into the newer cast. The peaks in the graphs are season seven won most number of sketches, season six won highest number of hilarious sketches, season six won highest number of funny sketches, and season two won best ratio of funny skits to overall number of sketches. None of these newer seasons beat any of the older seasons, except maybe for season 12 beating season one and season eight in terms of funny sketches. But even then, and that's not saying much. And I vastly prefer season one to any of these newer seasons anyways, mostly because I prefer the original cast. The only thing that's been consistent is the fact that they basically just stuck to 10 episode seasons. So that's nice for me at least, cause I did not like those 20 episode seasons. Let me tell ya, three more seasons to go, unless Jason gets Studio C out of its slum. I doubt anything on these graphs is going to improve, but only time will tell. My name is Jetta, and I am so honored to welcome back to the Studio C stage, Jason Gray! Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, guys. That's right. Jason is one of the original cast members of Studio C, and we are so excited to have him back for season 14. Thank you, guys. It is so great to be back. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Well, this isn't the best season. I actually for once have a lot of good to say. As alluded to in the last season, Jason Gray is back and I've missed him so much. So hopefully there will be more voice acting in the upcoming seasons. A new intro plays, which makes sense because they got a new cast members. Wait, did I say members? I meant member. Wait, why are there more new people here? I thought the season was going to be the season of Jason Gray, but from what I discovered, that's not totally true because they replaced some people. Huh. Weird. Ike is still around in episode 5, but I haven't seen Tori this season, except she cameos as a photograph and that's about it. With an upgraded studio, see, there are a lot of surprises in store for season 1 specifically. One of the biggest being the original cast did a cameo? What? 14. What? Where am I? I thought we agreed we were all gonna be on stilts. Why? Wait, I don't know. This is season seven. On the higher ground. That's me from the okay. past. Other surprises include more skits connecting together to make one cohesive storyline, and a cat remix of the theme song for the credits. And that's just episode one. Now, regarding some general comparisons throughout the season, it boils down to three main points. The caveman sketch feels like a skit about people who don't like the newer seasons. Great hunt is meant to be symbol of chaos, Jub. Job understands symbolism. <laughs> the theater skit was one I loved because it's a good representation of the original cast passing the baton onto the newer cast because I understand symbolism. And the musicals don't stop. They never do. I can't escape. Especially from the special traditions they love to stick to. Including the Halloween special where they ran with the fun twist of the Edgar Allan Crowe storyline, which was fun since the first half of the skits in the episode were funny. They also as always, do a Christmas special, but this time there was a stop motion remix of the intro song, Dalton's Nick Cage impression is spot on, and the Trixie Megan show returned. Now while looking over my notes for this season, it's honestly not a lot, it's 
like half of a page. I realized that there are exactly 10 hilarious sketches this season, which is actually good because last season there was only four. So at least there's an increase, which is also true for the funny sketches. Not much of a difference, but hey, at least we're going up. Oh, by the way, here's the score for this season since I actually remember to mention it this time. But did I write it down on my notes? Nope, <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Well, at least we have one more season, and then I never have to watch this show ever again. Remember how I mentioned I think you should leave earlier? Well, imagine an entire episode in that style, with special guest Will Forte in episode one. For what it is, I think it was a great collaboration. Really funny skits all the way through. Probably the peak of the season, honestly, because it kind of just goes downhill after this cameo. It was also revealed this season that there was a new cast member, and then another cameo in episode nine of a sports coach. And then once the episode was over, there was an after credits scene where they eat ice cream. Ooh, actually ice cream sounds really good right now. You know, writing is hard and so are transitions. I have written so many for part one and part two alone. <sighs> you know, I should probably return this to the fridge. Oh, that's it! There are four returning situations that have happened in season 15. The second to last season. I'll cheer to that. A Burger Barn reference from last season. Not sure if I even mentioned that parody of McDonald's last time. They did another VFX styled show called Loki with Loki, which I was not a fan of. A Bob Iger sketch, which just turned out to be a shoulder angel sketch, but with an absolutely disgusting rat, which is exactly why I have a problem with the live action. Disney movies. Yeah, sure, I've seen both versions of Aladdin, but honestly, you can't just replace Robin Williams and then expect the same result. Also, with musicals, you have to constantly suspend your disbelief because nobody just sings everything that they do. Like, just talk normally. Anyways, I'm getting off my soapbox now. <laughs> Last of all, they finally brought back Jason as Batman, and it only took them... I don't actually know. How long did it take them? Oh about two seasons. Hello and welcome to the top 10 moments of season 15. Are they good? Are they bad? The answer is yes. At number 10, they roasted Taylor Swift. Well, that's a first. The help save some children sketch was a good example of who's good at impressions while simultaneously, the bad impressions kind of weigh down the good ones. Number nine, a lesson in pronunciation. It's the newest family history tool by who are my ancestors.com. Sorry, what did you say? Who are my ancestors? Who are my ancestors? Episode eight had an intro that I really liked. Lucky number seven. Episode seven had a new intro that I really liked. Single six. They did a who's on first type parody that I thought was really clever. Number five had some pretty funny credits. Number four was an Envato Elements template. How do I know? Because I also use Envato Elements. And by use, I mean used because I'm broke right now and I can't afford it. Now we are in the top three moments of season 15, which means I'm going to go a little more in depth as to why these are at the top of my list. Number three, the choosing hat. Let's ignore the fact that I'm not a huge Harry Potter fan because this sketch actually isn't about Harry Potter, surprisingly. It's about one of the cast members having Tourette's syndrome. Hi there, I'm Tanner Gilman, America's sweetheart. And I think it's important for everybody watching at home to know that I wrote this sketch and I have Tourette's in real life. So we're cool. <laughs> like we're good. All right. Back to the sketch. I actually appreciate that this sketch was very educational in a lighthearted manner and didn't take things too seriously while also being honest about the struggles of having this. The sketch feels like a therapy session, but in a way that seems more respectful and insightful than some previous sketches. Number two. Mr. Rogers. Besides the full episodes with Will Forte, this is by far the funniest skit of season 15. While using awkwardness, props, VFX, green screen, costumes, silence, facial expressions, and impressions, this skit weaves a tale of Mr. Rogers' embarrassing secret. I felt the power of silence being so loud that it was the funniest thing to me. A perfect combination of all of these joke types, plus Jason playing Mr. Rogers, just worked perfectly. So perfectly that I'm honestly surprised how long this sketch went on. And at number one, 
the top moment from season 15, Spicy Romeo and Juliet. To spice things up a bit, every time you hear this bell ring, the cast must eat a piece of very spicy hot chicken. This stuff is so spicy, the cast had to sign a waiver before we committed to do this sketch. This sketch is interesting because they made it a challenge with the spicy food, something they've never officially done before on the show. I had low expectations, but was blown away by how humorous it was, even while not being too big a fan of Shakespeare. Here's the score. I don't want to talk anymore. And I'm way too hot. It's way too freaking hot in this room. The final season of Studio C. Whew, man, it's been a wild ride, and I'm glad it's finally over. It's been a year. Regarding the cast members of season 16, Toya returned as an onstage cast member. Two new cast members joined the season, which makes it seem like nowadays each new season has some new cast members every time. And John Heater is a special guest in episode one, which it took me a while to realize who John Heater actually was. So uh, you guys fans of the Napoleon Dynamite movie or the animated series? We don't like history shows. Can you just take a picture of me and my wife? Returning back to form, we have some new intros, one well, normal one and one that was specifically for the Halloween episode, which I actually really liked. We then had two skits this season that felt like commentaries about the original versus new cast. Speaking of which, the comment song wasn't actually in the TV show, but rather a YouTube exclusive, so we'll cover that in the bonus sketches. Duggan's Movers made several appearances in the season, but honestly, I wasn't super hyped for the specific series. This also led me to realize that there are three specific sketches that seemed more like sequels to previous skits. For example, there was a doctor's office sketch that turned into a musical that was literally just the car song but with milk, a time travel sketch that feels very reminiscent from a few seasons ago except escalated even further than before, and a combination of the James Bond and My Apologies sketch. Now on to what was new about season 16. There's only 7 episodes this season, which is because the rest of the episodes are technically compilations for some reason, so those count more so as bonus content than anything. I don't count those as actual episodes because we've already seen all of those sketches before. A ham radio pun that I enjoyed way too much, free feet pics, an entire sketch about fat phobia, which had a disclaimer, and this is me on the phone. Yeah, 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 I mean, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Give me the phone. To end off the season. I am happy to announce that the last sketch of season 16 was actually a banger. The whole premise is that one cast member has no script, which makes this specific sketch half improv. I like this premise for a sketch, I just wish they tried more experimental stuff like this in the newer seasons more often to help keep it fresh, because this ended up being the best sketch of the season. And the final score of the show because, well, this is the final season, is 20 out of 52. I, honestly, I'm not even mad. I'm just glad we're done. Since we've gone through all 16 seasons of Studio C, it's time to talk about the exclusive bonus sketches that were not a part of the episodes. Season 10 had one bonus sketch, which was the premise of Peter Pan being too old to fly, which used a lot of joke types, but wasn't that funny of a sketch. Oh, maybe that's why it was cut for time. Here is a very special sketch where I get to play Peter Pan. This sketch was cut for time, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't be able to enjoy it. Season 11 had an exclusive sketch about a kid exposing a magician, which was kind of funny, but nothing to write home about. Season 16 had 36 bonus videos? Are you kidding me? Actually, this is a very good thing because most of the sketches that weren't in the show are better than the ones that are. So why watch season 16 when you can just watch the exclusives? And also the improv sketches, those are actually worth your time. The bonus sketches alone in season 16 get a score of 17 out of 23, meaning most of them were actually really clever. So I don't know why in the world they cut all of these sketches in season 16. Honestly, this is probably why season 16 was only seven episodes instead of the normal 10. We could have easily gotten 10 episodes this season if they didn't just cut all of these sketches. I just, my brain doesn't understand why this was a thing, 
Why was this a thing? There are seven hilarious sketches which I will show here, and are ones I actually highly recommend watching if you're looking for the funniest sketches of the newer seasons. Out of all of these, the Olive Garden sketch was actually my favorite. It's got a weird mix of both repeats and escalation in a weird way that actually makes it even hilarious when the third time rolls around even though you're expecting something else. It's subverting expectations. That's why this sketch is good. I feel like most of the sketch in the newer seasons just don't subvert expectations whatsoever. The jokes are just way too predictable. Normally, we'd be done talking about the exclusive videos, except there are more exclusive series to cover, such as Studio C+, which was basically a talk show with challenges. The best section of this series is called The Honey Roast, which had me dying of laughter shooting up this series to be one of the more hilarious ones purely because of that. But you recently booked a show called Karate Kid the Musical. Congrats. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Between that and Studio C, what's it like to have worked on two intellectual properties that previously had fan bases? <laughs> They even had some improv type skits in the series, but honestly, it doesn't even compare to the Honey Roast. Another series that was incorporated into the season was the Best Of series, which are literally just compilations of sketches we've already seen, and since it combines the older and newer sketches, they will typically have one member of the original cast and one member of the newer cast in between sketches. If you've already seen all the sketches, like me, who forced myself to for some godforsaken reason, these are not even worth a watch. Maybe if you want some, I don't know, Christmas theme content, but you already got that at the beginning. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. And by all, I mean me. I finally get to watch the comment song. Honestly, that was a really good representation of how the original fan base felt about the show. And that while some people left the audience, there are still people around who genuinely love the show. Like me, I love the show, but I don't love the newer seasons. Not really. I mean, there's some that are funny, but like, I definitely prefer the original cast and original sketches. Well, this is the last graph segment. Because there are no more seasons to cover. I'm finally free! Basically, I was right. While some of the graphs did go up slightly, it's nothing major enough to save the show, to be honest. I honestly hoped that the Jason Redemption arc would, you know, make the show better. But that's what's tricky when you're trying to do a video like this, where you're criticizing certain forms of comedy. Since everyone is different, it's easy to say, I'm biased, since I loved the original cast even before watching the entire show. However, I did watch the entire show, which wasn't easy, and it certainly makes me more confident in my previous assessment that the older seasons are just better. I have honestly figured out ways to not just be like, this season is funny because it made me laugh. Although, I'll be honest, that was a factor because, well, this is a comedy show. I have meticulously painstaking took way too much time to create an entire spreadsheet with graphs and statistics season by season episode by episode logging every single sketch by hand to take a more objective take on the show using actual facts instead of feelings though i have addressed both from the data i've gathered we know that most seasons have about 10 episodes that after a certain point there is a downward trend when the original cast left none of the newer sketches have gone viral the most popular sketches on the channel are still the ones from the original cast they started a series called studio c rewind in an attempt to get their views back up by re-uploading older sketches with the original cast. Studio C Plus brings back some of the original cast members in an attempt to stay relevant to the original fan base, and that the top joke trends of all time throughout the entire show were always props, awkwardness, juxtaposition, and costume. I have watched 1,390 sketches in total, which by the way, that doesn't even factor in the bonus sketches. So I've actually watched over 1,400 sketches from Studio C. Man, am I tired. Actually, two different answers to this question. The first is the boring answer, revealed in the Studio C documentary. All right, everybody, we're heading over to Studio C. Now, you could say that's what the C stands for. 
like literally the letter C. But because I overthink everything, to me, it's just not a satisfying enough answer. The literal place that they worked. You could argue that the C stands for comedy, since it's very clear that's what the show is. But the problem is, they never say it outright. They'll joke about what the C stands for, but the only answer that's actually been confirmed is the place that they work. However, the answer that I found is more sinister. And while it's never said outright, if you read between the lines, everything becomes clear. The name is actually two separate entities. Studio and it looks worse than it actually is but once you know the reality it's worse than this out of context all right so let's fill in some of these letters oh uh oh gosh that looks worse there we go now, since I let everybody that I watch on YouTube influence me, it's time to talk about cults. Now, according to Oxford, there are four definitions of the word cult. And well, what's a video essay without looking up the definition of a specific word to prove a point? One, a person or thing that is popular or fashionable, especially among a particular section of society. Arguably, Studio C is known as one of the most popular comedy shows in certain religious circles, as well as some sketches reaching the mainstream Stream to topic and virality, making it a cult classic by definition. Two, a misplaced or excessive admiration for a particular person or thing. This one isn't as relevant as some of the other definitions, it's just a comedy show after all. Three, a relatively small group of people having religious beliefs or practices regarded by others as strange or sinister. I mean, Studio C is made by BYU TV, and BYU TV is made by Brigham Young University. And Brigham Young University is run by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Man, can you have a longer name? And while I necessarily wouldn't call it sinister, the common consensus among the people who aren't involved in this specific circle definitely see some of their practices as weird. You know, special religious underwear, polygamy. Four, a system of religious veneration and devotion directed towards a particular figure or object. By definition, Yes. Revelations from Joseph Smith about the latter days. I mean, the church is literally called the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints. If it has anything in common with a cult, it would be the ability for the leadership to gaslight its people, which modern day revelation gives them that inroad. You know, we, we can change things. We can move the goalposts and attribute that to something that can't be tested, but has to be accepted on faith. And e yeah, even if it cuts against the historical Mm. you know, track record of the church. I really urge you to reconsider the trust you put in these prophets. They're humans just like the rest of us, and you should never give them unquestioned authority over your life. So they're behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. Wouldn't necessarily need to tick all of the boxes, but there they neatly and conveniently sidestep and ignore all the other indicators. In reality, there's no archaeological, genetic, or linguistic evidence that supports the Book of Mormon's assertion that Jewish people migrated to the Americas around 600 BC. This is the same old story of a charismatic, visionary man who tells a story of apocalyptic endings to gain followers, to gain power, and then decides that he deserves a lot of women, and then he dies for the cause, leaving a movement that continues his vision. Oftentimes those movements get more and more dogmatic. They use shame to keep their people close to them and they revere their prophet long after that prophet is dead. Did you know that they had to send missionaries to Salt Lake City? Utah, the literal state of Mormonism, had to send missionaries back into their own hometown. Crazy stuff. Did you also know that Latter-day Saints and Mormons are basically the same thing? I thought they were two separate entities for the longest of time. But no, it's the Mormon Church of the Latter-day Saints. You know, the ones who can strike the fear of God in you just by knocking on your door. Here's the deal, the state of Utah, although being known as the capital of Mormonism, isn't actually entirely Mormon. This also goes for the BYU campus, since it is a college after all, with people of all different walks of life 
and living situations all moving into one campus. So while Studio C isn't technically Mormon, it was established by people who are Mormon. But you don't need to be a Mormon to be on the Studio C team. Two things can be true at once. There can be a really funny comedy show that's also connected to a cult. Love this part, don't love this part. I think people need to learn the lesson to stop just stop. It says a lot that their most popular videos are from earlier seasons, especially from season 5, which were honestly hilarious. The only exception of this is a YouTube short they did more recently, which has gotten about 9 million views. Other than that though, you can tell that there was some magic with the original cast. There's a sketch with Jason and Austin that perfectly encapsulates the difference between the cast eras. Oh, I can't believe we finally got some time off, Shanice. <laughs> You're telling me, Benice, I swear, working at the MTA is gonna suck the collagen right out of my epidermis. Oh, the stress, the stress of working on a concrete train tunnel is making my eyebrow plugs pop right out. Pop, pop. The golden era of Studio C has been over for years, and the new cast members are fully aware of that, to the point where they got so fed up that they made an entire song about it. So. The main thing that I learned from this project was that while making a comedy show, you can have all of these joke types, props, costumes, and songs you want, but if the cast doesn't have memorable chemistry, or for that matter, memorable names, people aren't gonna care as much. You know the saying, all good things come to an end? That's why the show failed. They didn't end it on that high note of season nine. Instead, they kept making more with a totally different cast that just didn't have the same spirit as the original cast. At least, it's done. Finished. Forever.